as you know, the Republican Party continues to be interested in a national abortion ban. Which he's ban. disavowed completely. Yeah, he's disavowed a lot of things. I don't believe him. You because think he lies all the time. Boom! Pete Buttigieg, why do they keep inviting you on Fox News? True masochism on display. Okay then, well, uh, let's start at the top. Is Kamala Harris fit and ready to serve as President of the United States? He says she's unpopular. She's been a bad campaigner. She's been a bad manager. Um, she's a blue state Dem who's got to win purple states. She's anchored to the president's record. He worries that, um, well, maybe Democrats should be more worried that there hasn't been a thorough vetting. So when she gets into this head to head with President Trump, um, there will be wishes that she had been vetted. The idea that somebody hasn't been tested or vetted when they have been vice president of the United States for nearly four years just doesn't make any sense. She is in uh, obviously one of the most visible leadership roles in the country. And she's demonstrated uh, both her effectiveness in that job and a vision for the country that Americans agree with. And that's a real reason I think she's going to win, is that most Americans already agree with her on the issues that they care about the most, that affect them the most, whether we're talking about uh, choice and her stance on defending a woman's right to choose uh, versus Donald Trump, who eliminated a right to choose in this country. Well, he sent uh, whether, it back to the states, no, to be fair. He, let's be very clear. He is proud of the fact that he demolished the national Roby right way. to choose in this country, period. Tell us more about abortion. He did say that he wanted to get rid of Roe v. Wade, but again, send it to the states where they are yeah, hashing this out the and have, to, and uh, have uh, very different women's access to abortion. And also, very, as you know, the Republican Party continues to be interested in a national abortion ban. Which he's ban. disavowed completely. Yeah, he's disavowed a lot of things. I don't believe him you because think he that, lies all the time. You think that his his uh, pledge that he would not pass a, a national ban is one that <laughs> it's trusted. one that's going to go down with most of the promises okay. that he's made and broken. But Pete. Trump says Biden is the worst president of all time, and Kamala will be an even worse president of all time. The simple fact is that Joe Biden is good at being president. You can tell by the results that he's getting, results that Donald Trump tried and failed to get. Trump tried and failed to get the kind of job growth that Joe Biden has presided over. Trump tried and failed to get an infrastructure bill done. So at the end of the day, you judge a president's effectiveness based on the job that they're doing. And that's what we've seen. Now, the president made an extraordinary, historic, selfless choice to take himself out of the nominating process and concentrate 100 percent on the presidency. I think that was the right choice. I know he's going to want to sprint through the tape in terms of the work of the presidency. Meanwhile, we have a new nominee. Here's the thing, Pete. Trump does what he says he's going to do. That's why people vote for him. There was a national right to choose in this country, law of the land, for 50 years, which the vast majority of Americans believe was the right thing to do. But Donald Trump made a promise when he was a candidate, one of the few promises he actually kept, by the way. You know, he didn't keep his promise of 6% economic growth. He didn't keep his promise well, to drain the swamp. Well, he did have a pandemic he, to deal with. He, well, but even before the pandemic, and America, even before the pandemic, America went into a manufacturing recession which really hurt places like where I come from in the industrial Midwest. But anyway, but my, point is, my, my point is, he broke his promise for that kind of economic growth. Uh, he broke uh, his promise to pass an infrastructure bill, right? He said he would do that. He failed to do it. The Biden-Harris administration got it done. Uh, he even broke his promise to that January 6th mob when he said, I will be at your side when you march down to the Capitol. But he actually did keep two promises. He kept his promise to destroy the right to choose in this country. And he kept his promise on tax cuts for the rich. And if you want to know what a second Trump term would be like, I would start by looking at those rare promises that he actually managed to keep. Okay, okay, okay. But the thing is, Biden was super duper old. Yes, we've also uh, seen the fact that he's 10 years older than he was 10 years ago. But unlike Republicans, who uh, in Trump's personality cult will take a look at Donald Trump and say he's perfectly fine, even though he seemed unable to tell the difference between Nikki Haley and Nancy Pelosi, even though he's rambling about electrocuting sharks and Hannibal Lecter, uh, even though he is, is clearly uh, older and stranger than he was when America first got to know him. Uh, they say he's strong as an ox, leaps tall buildings in a single bound. Well, he, we, we don't have that kind of warped reality on our side. Well, voters, and, and on the contrary, the president confronted that reality in what must have been one of the most difficult decisions for an American president to make ever. And he did something that I don't think Donald Trump could even conceive of doing, which is putting his own interests 
aside for the country. Well, voters have said that they are much less worried about the mental acuity and the physical strength of President Trump. They see compared them, to Biden or compared see. to Harris. I'm pretty sure voters are well, worried about the age and acuity of President Trump compared to Kamala Harris, who represents uh, being a generation younger. And how yeah, could well, anybody not watch the, the, the stuff he's saying, the rambling on the trail and not be just a little bit concerned? Well, that is certainly one of her talking points and one of yours now as her campaign, too. And, and something he, most and Americans he, believe. Well, but most Americans didn't have a worry about him the way that they did about President Biden. Americans when it comes are worried to, about him in lots of ways, and he's not running well, against saying, President based, Biden anymore. You can tell polling. he desperately wants to be, but he's not. All right, forget all that noise. Here's the big issue. Everybody knows that immigration is 100% Kamala Harris's fault. So what do you understand her role to be? And has the situation at the border improved or worsened? Yeah, let's be very clear about this, because there has been a lot of mischaracterization. She was not in charge of the border. The Homeland Security Department is in charge of the border. She did do something important, though. She was assigned to conduct diplomacy with Central American countries, knowing that that's part of the bigger picture of what's affecting the border. And you know what? Those Central American countries are among the few countries to see their numbers go down in terms of the source of migrants who are seen at the border. What she did was engage diplomatically and effectively. And of course, the bigger issue on the border and migration is that the Biden-Harris administration supported a bipartisan compromise to actually do something about it. One that had very conservative provisions that was hard for, for many in our party to support, but there was that bipartisan deal. Uh, even Mitch McConnell was for it, the head of the CBP union was for it, and then Trump swooped in to kill it. Not because he thought it was bad policy, but because he didn't want that issue to get better. Because if it got well, worse, it would be better for him politically. And Let's get real. Border crossings are down in the wake of President Biden's executive actions that he took after Congress failed so to act. So he could have taken action. He wanted Congress to resolve that because that would have been more durable. But when Trump came in, talked Republicans out of their own bipartisan project because he didn't want the issue to get better. Remember, the worst things are at the border the better things get for Donald Trump. So he has a vested interest in it remaining chaotic down there. I think this also helps to explain why he didn't exactly conclusively solve it when it was his turn. But I saw something else really important happening at the Republican National Convention on the border and, and the talk about immigration, which we all recognize as a problem, mm -hmm. which is they tried to paint this narrative that if you live somewhere far from the border and immigration hasn't affected you personally, you need to think that immigration is a driver of crime. That, that was the real message. Immigration leads to crime. Well, there, well, and I think it's really important that we that talk have, about have crime. Been very high profile about people. Of course, of course, there are individual cases. Illegally, but this, this is my people point, would still right? be alive. Trying to make people think that crime is up when crime is down under Joe Biden and crime was up under Donald Trump. Now, I don't know how often that gets reported on this network. So if you're watching this at home, do yourself a favor and look up the data. Well, we invite that. that. Uh, great. So if you look this up at home, you will know that crime went down under Biden and crime went up Certain under Trump. Categories. And I think the violent crime for sure. So I think the really important thing to ask is why would America want to go back to the higher crime that we experienced under Donald Trump? Well, Pete, I hope you enjoyed your last time on the network because there's no way Fox News is letting you back on to disgrace the network's propaganda campaign and expose the Republican Party for the authoritarian cult it's turned into. We always appreciate you coming, and we hope you'll come back again many times. Thanks for having me. And maybe as a vice presidential contender. We'll see. Thank you.